You know, people always ask me, Kibi, how'd you do it? How'd you score the Myriad Emblem? The 1 billion damage? The zero top up? Even with all my expensive gear, I just can't seem to do it. Well, I always tell them, there's a method to the madness. You see, I discovered some secret tips. Whales hate them. Agony players want to know them. And today, I'm going to share it with you. And actually, yeah, that is the topic of today's video, but it's not going to be that stupid. No, actually, it is going to be that stupid because, believe it or not, this is probably the driest topic in Honkai that no one wants to hear about. Basically, there is a lot of stuff that people misunderstand or misinterpret in this game. So the goal of this video is to explain everything I can. In the end, this is going to be a pretty disorganized video, so please use the YouTube chapter feature to navigate around if you need to. But let's go ahead and start. So damage is one of those things in Honkai where I would say the majority of players really don't know the origin of. Does it come from here? Does it come from there? I don't know where damage comes from. And most of the time the top players just test builds to see if they work. Most of the time the damage charts that you see floating around on the internet are very inaccurate. And that is because the way that you play the Valkyrie suited to the build can vary a lot. If that's not enough, the boss that you're fighting can also change your build. Basically when you see an out there build, sometimes it's just easier to stop asking questions and just copy it. And to be fair, what miHoYo has been doing in the past two years is simplifying all the builds. So a lot of the builds these days are just the three signature stigmatas. Back in my day, the builds looked a lot different. Sometimes filling in a couple pieces of gear is fine enough, but when you start using more than that, you're basically using your own build, and that's where a lot of problems start happening. So we're going to explain the damage system itself, but before that, let's go over the stigmata lingo that goes around in the game. This is where people make the biggest mistakes, so it is very important for me to go over it. Okay, first off, we have basic attacks and burst mode. And basic attacks, like the name implies, are just the normal hits that your Valkyrie does. Do note that this does not include stuff like QTEs or your weapon skills. Now this completely separates from burst mode. So what is a burst mode? Burst mode basically is when a Valkyrie uses their ultimate and their attacks change fundamentally because of it. Easy example is the Hersher of Sentience. Use the ultimate and she gets the ability to bonk. This is a burst mode. So if you're not sure if a Valkyrie has a burst mode or not, the easiest way to tell is on the Valkyrie select screen. Mihoyo has added an icon for any Valkyrie that has a burst mode. Sometimes it can get a little bit confusing, especially with Valkyries like Fervent Tempo Delta and Alicia. So why is this important? So the buffs for burst mode cannot buff basic attacks and the buffs for basic attacks cannot buff burst mode. This is really important to note because some Valkyries have most of their damage in the burst mode and some Valkyries obviously have no burst mode at all. So if you see any stigmata with the exact term basic attack or the exact term burst mode, Mode, do keep in mind this fact. Okay, the next term that is used on stigmatas is after exit. So after exit is used on a lot of free stigmata and it's very often misinterpreted. The common misinterpretation is that you actually have to switch into the Valkyrie to get this buff, but actually that's completely wrong. Basically the Valkyrie just has to not be on the field for this buff to work. Now most of the time after exit buffs will last forever, however there are some cases where there is a time associated with it. So for example the two set for Fuhua Musician. So let's just say for example your support Valkyrie has the two set Musician set. So at the very beginning of combat, at 0 seconds, the support Valkyrie is off field already. So this 10 second Musician 2 set buff has already taken place because the Valkyrie is already off field. Now the worst thing about the Fuhua Musician set is the fact that this buff does not refresh at all. So what ends up happening is that if you want this 10 second buff to refresh, you actually have to wait 10 seconds first. Next up we have Ultimate Evasion and Evasion Skills. So an ultimate evasion is basically when you evade an enemy's skill at the right time. This is the core mechanic of Honkai Impact. So a few things happen when you get an ultimate evasion. The first thing that happens is that your entire team will get 2 SP. The game will also intentionally lag for a brief amount of time just to give you some feedback. It's hard to describe, but basically it feels really nice. And of course the last thing that will happen is most likely your evasion skill will proc off the ultimate evasion. Now we want to differ the evasion skill from the ultimate evasion because you can trigger an ultimate evasion without triggering the ultimate evasion skill. And that's because even though your evasion skill can be on cooldown, you can still evade enemy attacks. So let's take the Stigmata Zoro top for example. This stigmata triggers off the ultimate evasion. With this stigmata, you can evade the same attack as many times as you want and get 3 SP for every single evasion you get. Contrast this with direct bottom, which can also proc off of your evasion skill. So some Valkyries can actually trigger their evasion skill without getting an ultimate evasion. Here's my Moonbeam just evading and getting the proc from direct bottom. Now believe it or not, Mihoyo decided to put another wording for evasion skill, which is the effect called retaliation. As far as I know, the description retaliation is only on the Dante stigmata. Basically, retaliation is the exact same thing as proccing your evasion skill. 
Okay, next we have the difference between time lock and time fracture. So global time fracture, I'm sure we're all familiar with. Basically, the entire stage will darken. In certain stages, this will also slow down the clock of the stage, like in Memorial Arena. And by taking advantage of this, you can get a much higher score. Now you want to differ this from the time lock slash time slow wording, which is the status effect of the enemy. So time fracture will actually inflict the status on the enemy as well, so that's why it often gets confused. But basically, time slow is when the enemy is slowed down in their attack. Some enemies are very resistant resistant to time slow, which means the effects will either run out very quickly or just not affect the enemy at all. So you want to keep this in mind because most Valkyrie skills refer to time slow, not the time fracture. On contrast, we have the Dark Jijian Yan Stigmata, which refers to the time fracture, not the time slow effect. All right, the last term I want to go over is the heavy description for a weapon. This is a really random description that MiHoYo put in. As far as I know, it's only on Beethoven Top, and basically this only refers to a cannon, not a greatsword. Okay, that segment of the video was way longer than I thought it would be, and it makes me realize how complicated this game is. But here's where we get into the deep stuff. How do you actually do damage? You want to use your own build in Honkai? This is where understanding how the damage system works in Honkai can really help you. Do you need to do complex math? No, but understanding the surface level knowledge is good enough. So basically, I'm going to try and explain the damage system in Honkai using an iceberg chart. Basically, all of these terms are thrown around in the stigmata lingo. And if you're a new player, you probably don't know a single thing about any of these multipliers. So here we go from the top, starting with attack. So attack is literally the stat that your Valkyrie has. Like most games, if you have more attack, you're going to do more damage. Well, where does that come from? Where the attack is useful is in skills. So in Honkai, your damage is completely calculated into skills. So for example, when you do a basic attack, that is a skill. And if you use an ultimate, that is also a skill. You can see these skills on the skill page of the Valkyrie. So for example, a hypothetical skill can do 100% of your attack. In that example, if your attack is 1000, then the skill would do 1000 damage. Moving on, we have type counters. We're all familiar with type counters if you've played the game at all. Type counters give you a 30% advantage or disadvantage. Basically just add 30% or minus 30% to your damage. They're separated from everything else and is calculated at the end. It's one of the most important aspects of Honkai, so get used to it. Moving on to layer two, things get a little spicy but it's nothing too complicated. So first things first, let's look at the crit stats. So the first thing to note is that the critical stats only matter for physical damage, which means elemental damage does not crit. How does crit work? Well, if your hit strikes a critical, then your damage gets a multiplier. And that multiplier is your critical damage. You ever play Genshin Impact? In Genshin Impact, you can easily see your critical rate and your critical damage on the stat screen. In Honkai Impact, you cannot see either of these stats. But wait a minute, what is this CRT stat? This is what we call a red herring. It's not a very useful stat but it is used in the calculation for the critical rate. It contributes such a small amount, you can basically think of this stat as useless. If you want to know your critical rate and your critical damage, well then you have to do the hard math, or you just guess, which is what most of us do. So in Honkai Impact, the base critical damage is 100%. What does that mean? It means if you get a critical hit, you will do double the damage. You can compare this with Genshin Impact's base critical damage, which is 50%, so you'll realize that the crit rate stat is more important in this game. But most of our endgame builds have crit rate jacked to the tits. Next, let's talk about the damage multipliers. So most of the gear that you've seen probably buff uh, damage in some way. For example, this piece of gear can give me 20% physical damage. If I did 1000 damage, now I'll do 1200 damage. Easy, right? And you may ask yourself, is there any difference between the damage multiplier and the crit damage multiplier? In terms of function, they actually don't have any difference other than the fact that the crits are random. Going back to Genshin Impact, do you know why crit rate is so important in that game? I'll give you five minutes. Okay, five minutes is too long. Basically, you have a problem that's called dilution. So let's say you already have a physical damage multiplier in your kit. Let's say you have 100% physical damage stacked up in your kit. You're basically doing double the physical damage here. So instead of doing 1000 damage, you're doing 2000 damage. But now let's say you get another source of physical damage multiplier. Let's say it's 100% as well. So what happens from here? Do you go from 2000 to 4000 damage? The answer is, you go from 2000 to 3000 damage, and that is because the physical damage multipliers will add. You basically have a 200% physical damage multiplier. This is what we call damage bonuses stacking additively. But wait a minute, what about crit damage? Well, the crit damage is treated separately from the physical damage percent, so they will multiply with each other, and that basically means you go from 2000 to 4000 damage. It is important to note that the crit damage also stacks additively with itself though. So again, if you stack another 100% crit damage, you're going to do three times the damage, not four times the damage. And that is really important when we talk about the next thing, which is the total damage multiplier. So certain gears in Honkai have this description which describes boosting your total damage by a certain amount. Now obviously this is a damage multiplier that is indiscriminate between elemental and physical damage. However, if you keep in mind the dilution discussion that we had earlier, 
you might think, oh, let's add this to the physical damage multiplier that we had before. And I'm gonna stop you right there because that's not how it works. That's right, total damage multiplier actually multiplies with the others. So that's right, if you have 100% of both, you are doing four times the damage. And yes, total damage multiplier will stack with itself, which means you can basically treat the three things that we've been talking about as three separate pools. Each pool will add with itself, but multiply with the others. So if you had 100% of all three, now you're doing eight times the damage. And the last thing in layer two is the weather system. Well, the weather system is basically one of the most important aspects of the Honkai endgame. This is basically the multiplier of the actual stage itself. And this thing can be very complicated because sometimes it works into one of these pools, but other times it can be a separate multiplier in itself. And in that case, it can reduce your final damage by a ton, but on the other hand, it can also increase your damage by a ton. And yes, this is basically the main way that MiHoYo balances the game. All right, moving on to layer three. Let's start with the easier stuff. Now in Honkai Impact, it's not enough that you have to buff your Valkyrie, but there's also the fact that you have to debuff the enemy. Most of the time, the debuffs are applied by support Valkyries. And basically what happens is this is another multiplier that we have to worry about, which means yes, there are two other separate pools which stack additively with itself, but multiply with the others. So there's one for physical and elemental damage taken and the total damage taken. If you've been keeping track and you had 100% of every single one of these pools, well, now you do 32 times the amount of damage. And of course, Honkai is not that simple to only have multipliers. We also have to think about the enemy's resistance. This is such an important thing to keep track of, and it can make everything we've been talking about completely useless. For example, the elemental resistance value of Jizo is about 70%, so basically just take off 70% of the damage that you were doing. Now of course, Jizo doesn't only have elemental damage resistance, he also has physical damage resistance, and that is 25%. Now most bosses have more physical damage resistance, and usually this value comes from the elite shield. The idea is you break the shield and the entire physical resistance is depleted to zero. And you may have noticed there are now shields that reduce elemental damage as well. And to make things simple, basically this always just depends on the enemy that you're fighting. And of course, there is actually a way to get through this resistance value, and that is called Breach. So Breach directly subtracts from the enemy's resistance value. So Breach is extremely powerful when the resistance values are a lot higher. Let's go back to our 1000 damage example. We can fight two enemies, one with 90% resistance to our damage and one with 10%. So which one is Breach going to be more helpful on? The answer is the one with 90%. Let's say we apply a 10% breach. Basically what happens is the enemy's resistance goes from 90 to 80 and 10 to zero respectively. In the example with the enemy with 90% resistance, our damage would go from 100 to 200. So just from 10% breach, our damage already doubled. Now let's look at the enemy with 10% resistance. So our damage here would go from 900 to 1000, which is what, an 11% bonus? This makes much less of an impact, but you can see how Breach is much more important endgame. And that is because the resistance values get higher as the disturbance also goes up. Now with Breach, folks, we only have Elemental Breach. And believe it or not, folks, there are three types of resistances, just like how we have three different types of buffs. Which means as of right now, we have no way to build against the physical resistance and the total damage resistance that an enemy might have. But uh-oh, what is this? Physical Breach does seem to exist in the Elysian Realm. This is definitely something that we might see in future patches. And did you think resistance would be that simple? Of course not. Now believe it or not, there are actually different ways that the enemy gets physical resistance. So like we discussed before, an enemy might have physical resistance based on its shield or just has it innately. But guess what? There is another way that the boss has physical resistance and that is the defense value that the boss has. So defense value is treated in a very complex formula. Basically 1000 defense is like 34% resistance. The harder the content, the higher the defense. And so how does it work when a boss has two different sources of resistance? Do you add them? No, you do something like this. And of course, the thing that you may have heard is very important for physical teams is to use Impair. Now, Impair takes out a percentage of the boss's defense, which is basically just one branch of the enemy's physical resistance. But basically, for physical teams, this is the closest thing to Breach that we have. When an enemy has a lot of defense, it also has a lot of physical resistance just from the defense. So when physical breach is released, you would still use it with impair. All right, finally, we get to the last layer. All right, first off, we have independent multipliers. So these are some multipliers that are on some skills and some stigmatas. The two ways to discern it are if the stigmata says from the host, it can also say something like independent effect in parentheses. So these work completely different from all of the rest of the multipliers. If you remember, basically all of the multipliers worked in pools and they stacked additively with themselves while multiplying with the others. Well, these independent effects are not only separate from all of these pools, they also multiply with themselves. So let's read a stigmata like Thalus Mid. The second part of the stigmata gives you a 2% fire damage bonus, stacking up to 10 times, and this is a independent multiplier. So what does that mean? 
it means this stick mana will give you an undiluted 22% fire damage bonus. This is by far the strongest multiplier type there is, so whenever you see an independent multiplier or from the host, you're dealing with a very strong effect. Now the last thing on this is the specific multiplier. Now this is actually something that I made up. So certain bosses and enemies will have specific multipliers. Basically they're things that miHoYo designed so that you can do more damage to the boss. So the easiest example is Heimdall. So each time a segment of Heimdall's shield breaks, he takes 5% more damage. And then when all four segments break, he takes 20% additional damage. So these are independent multipliers, so that means they multiply together. Basically by the end, he'll take 44% more damage, and that multiplies with any of the debuffs that you might have. Now let's contrast this with Huodo. Now Huodo is a boss that takes 25% more damage when he's freezing or bleeding. And in this case, it is not an independent multiplier, it is treated as a normal debuff. And basically this debuff will add to your Newtons and stuff like that. So each boss in this game might have their own niche multipliers. Basically, it's a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, that basically covers everything that has to do with multipliers. And if you made it this far, congratulations, you did it. So hopefully with this video, you will know why the second build here is much better than the first. And you might have figured out if you have the Hershey Flame Scion, Thalus Mid is an incredibly strong stigmata. It's free and it's incredibly important to get if you don't have the crystals for the signature gear. Now whether or not you understood everything that I mentioned is another question, and if you didn't that's fine, please try and comment a question if you do have one. I'll try and get to them when I can. But with all that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.